Spring ball is at the halfway mark, and it's time to see how things are progressing for the Longhorns. Who is impressing early, and how is the team performing as a whole? What do we still need to work on? Who's winning their position battles? Owner of Inside Texas, Eric Nolene, stops by to fill us in on all the behind the scenes of spring practice. Inside Texas is running a spring special where you get four months for just $1. Stay up to date on the program and sign up at InsideTexas.com today. There's a lot of new faces and players in new positions, so let's get up to speed. Without further ado, let's get into it. What is up, Eric? What's been the word on both Card and yours halfway into spring, and has either one of them really been able to separate themselves? Neither quarterback is is pulling away, I would say. You know, Card is still number one, so I always defer to whoever num- is number one and talk about him first. I know fan perception is that yours is going to win, but I'll let it play out on the field. I, I, I try to stay out of these competitions and, and just report what the facts on the ground. The good about Card is that, you know, when he's on, he's really accurate. His timing is good. Quick release, and I think he's probably a better in the intermediate game, working with receivers on the option routes, and he has a better grasp of the playbook. Uh, as to be expected. The good of Ewers is probably what also leads to the bad. It's that powerful arm, and he tends to overtrust it. I don't think it's just young quarterbacks. I think powerful people tend to overtrust their, their strength. You know, think of a puncher who always tries to swing hard and go for the knockout punch. You know, as you as you start to learn, you start to use your other strengths. Things start to slow down for you. Maybe you're not swinging wildly at that curveball anymore. As he starts to get an idea of how fast these defenses are moving, he's not going to fall victim to that arm strength as much. The good with him, of course, is, is he could throw off his back foot about a mile. And so, so he makes you uh, he makes you defend every blade of grass. Card has a strong arm. I think uh, yours is a little different, especially with the way he trusts it and uh, trusts the receivers. But if he plays a lot this year, I expect him to have a pretty big plus minus. You know, that's going to be a lot of touchdowns, but it's going to we're going to have to live with the share of picks too, uh, and then he'll grow from there. And Sarkin, the pressers mentioned contact courage and pocket awareness. So is Card developing in that aspect of the game? One of the things that was hard to understand going into next year was was how fast Card was going to play within the pocket. The way quarterbacks are protected in college. It's hard to ever truly know until they're out there. And to me, that's still going to be an unknown until we see it, um, you know, and probably not in the first week. Card looked all right in the first week last year. And then, you know, Arkansas, Arkansas had everybody perplexed. You know, I've said it a million times that that car, that loss does not fall on card. It falls on the coaches first and foremost. Um, but, you know, he did look frazzled uh, under pressure. And so I don't think we're going to understand that until, you know, even in scrimmage work, because they're not allowed to get hit. Uh, they're still protected. To me, it's going to be, can you, can you protect him with a short and intermediate passing game? Uh, because the real question going in, and I guess we could talk more about it is, you know, I don't know that they're going to have the offensive line to run it and then throw it over the top. And so they're going to have to introduce some things that are going to take some standing in the pocket and uh, getting the ball out quick uh, to aid the quarterbacks. But I don't think either of them are afraid of, of playing the position and sta- standing in the pocket. You know, they've both shown grit at times. Then Malik Murphy was back with some light throwing coming off the injury. So any update on his progress? Um, no, strong arm. You know, the, the things that we know. I can't wait to see him, you know, when we hear about him more and see how far he can move up the depth chart within this window and then where he can go in August. You know, I love his ability to throw throw the ball far, but what, what separates him from most quarterbacks his size is, is that he can take he can change speeds uh, he put a lot of touch on the ball so I'm excited to hear about him but that's you know I don't think we're going to expect much out of him this spring and you know he's, he's not doing a whole lot yet let's hit the guys that protect the quarterbacks then what's the current lineup on offensive line and how is their performance thus far current offensive line lineup features uh Carrick Angelo Majors uh Hayden Connor and of course uh, Christian Jones you know I, I just don't know that we're going to see it here hear a lot about a, a ton of improvement from them the way they can improve is, is to play more cohesive as a unit but individually uh, aside Hayden Connor I think we all kind of know where they are or where they're going um you know if Christian Jones was going to make a giant leap it probably already would have happened Carrick is a little bit <clears throat> limited physically so his his leap is going to be just being more technically sound more assignment sound not not making as many mental mistakes uh, Angelo I think we kind of know what he is. Majors is going to improve, but you know, I think it's going to be incrementally. He's going to be, you know, a good junior senior. I think we can expect league average out of him this season. So Connor out of that group is the one that we can hope to make a big jump. They struggled running the ball in the scrimmage last Saturday, but I think uh, I think a lot of that was a function of Sarkeesian's resolve to try to get the ball going downhill. It, it didn't work very well. But you know, we'll see. I could be I could come on next week and contradict everything I said because as we know, they're going to scrimmage on Saturday and uh, this video is being recorded before that. How are they holding up in pass protection? Uh pass pro is a little bit unknown. Um, you know, th- I think they are struggling a little bit there, but also that's a function of PK having a lot more different looks this year. PK is tinkering quite a bit. And, you know, it takes away that uh, that advantage that the offense has of, or, you know, both sides have the advantage of the other side of the ball being predictable. I don't think the defense is quite as predictable as it was last year. I know they've, they've instituted some new things. I'm still trying to get a handle on it, but, you know, our, the edges are not that great. We had a well-placed source at scrimmage on Saturdays, like, no, nah, it's still a big weakness. So uh, I, I think that's to be expected. You know, the, the, 
the positions that are waiting for the, for the talent influx are still waiting for the talent influx, you know, and they threw heavy numbers at offensive line, they threw heavy numbers at edge, uh, and not a lot of those guys are on campus yet. And so they kind of are who they are, who they were last year at that the, that position, you know, to a certain extent. So are they waiting on some freshman alignment to get reps this year? Freshmen are going to play. They're going to have a chance to play. I think, you know, Kelvin Banks, I think, is, is going to play a lot. Guard's going to be a little bit tougher for somebody to break through, but any tackle is going to have a chance to play for sure. Too deep is going to be wide open and then you're one injury away from playing. Uh, but I, I feel strongly that they'll have one one freshman at least start most of the games. Uh, and then you'll, you'll probably see some other ones play a lot. I mean, they, they rotated offensive linemen quite a bit last year while they were looking for rotations and, and trying to get guys in because, you know, there was just so much uncertainty. Well, there's going to be a lot of uncertainty going into next year, too. So I think we're going to see a lot of guys play whether or not they start is unknown outside of I, I feel strongly Kelvin Banks will earn his way in, into serious playing time. And then at running back, are we seeing more two back formations? And what's the word on Holoby switch? to offense and Keelan's role in the backfield. One of the more exciting developments of spring ball so far is probably the, the usage of 20 personnel. It's two running backs out there. Obviously, running back is a team strength. Two of the best players on the team are Rashawn and Bijan. And of course, they're two of the best leaders as well. And you don't become a leader without being assignment sound. So you're going to expect fewer mistakes out of those two. Tight end is still a question. So, you know, it just makes makes sense to, to, to play to your strengths. We knew that they were using it already, of course, but they really told us the story when they moved Jaden Holoby over there because, you know, you, you want Rashawn Sean spelling Bijan as a runner, not necessarily out there lead blocking for him. So they moved Holoby over there. Holoby was was originally recruited as an H back. He makes sense as a lead blocker. Um, he knows what tempo to play with, and he's and he's got the physicality. So that's an interesting development. It's not a surprising development. I think it's not a coincidence that the same weekend that the offense had trouble running the ball, the linebackers looked better, and that they got a commitment from Samaje Burrell that that they moved him over there. It just made a lot of sense to me. Haven't heard a lot about Keelan because I think that he's more of a gonna he's gonna be what. Uh, they play off of after they assert their uh, their true identity. You know, he's going to be when when they establish an identity and, and and teams go to combat that. I think that's when they're going to move him him around and get him more involved. And I think we'll see that later in the spring or, or maybe more of August. I haven't heard a whole lot about him so far this year, but I think it's more that he's kind of like in the secondary offense. Not that he can't play lead running back or anything like that. Of course he can. But I think we'll hear about more of the uh, exotic stuff, the page two things uh, a little as, as we get further into practice. Makes sense. And you said there were still some questions at inline tight end. How is the battle between Helm and Sanders shaping up? Blocking is going to be a concern from the inline tight ends and, until he gets some game experience. They're going to have to take some bad beats, make some mistakes, and learn from them. Helm and, and Jatavian Sanders go back and forth. Neither of them are being used as a receiver a whole lot, but if you were going to say which uh, one was going to get targets, it, it's it's Jatavian. A lot of times they'll use him to get out in the flat and just sort of move the sticks. But again, to me, that's going to be more page two stuff when they get those guys further downfield and running routes. Uh, they're working on the the basics quite a bit of getting their main key players involved. Uh, they really need that position to be able to hold up against the pass rush and, and give them the help in run blocking. And I think that's the focus so far. You know, it's still it's still early, and they're both very talented. They're going to get better when they get more edge talent on practice on, on on campus too. You know, part of the problem is there's there's not a lot of guys to whip them into shape. Yeah, and how is Billingsley looking at the flex tight end spot? You know, I think they're just focusing more on the wide receivers uh, at this point. It, everybody knows he's a fantastic athlete. You know, twelve personnel is still probably the predominant package. You know. I think most of the excitement when we talk to sources is about, you know, how they look when they have 20 personnel and they've got those two running backs out there, Worthy, Nair, and Whittington all, all lined up. All those guys are big play waiting to happen. Maybe Rashawn's not a big play waiting to happen, but he's an exciting play waiting to happen and can get downhill and truck somebody. We need to probably hone in more on uh, on what 12 personnel is. Uh, they're getting out of 12 personnel and, you know, we'll have a scrimmage report probably tomorrow afternoon. How is the wide receiver lineup looking? And is Casey Kane coming on? The scrimmage last week was really run focused. You know, I think Xavier Worthy only got one target, so we can't really go by that. But, um, you know, obviously they're going to throw the ball around quite a bit. But, yeah, they're, they're really excited about the, the guys that they have out there starting. Uh, Whittington in the slot, obviously. Uh, Worthy predominantly to the field, but but he moves around. Uh, Nair predominantly to the boundary, but he moves around. Uh, all three of those guys can beat you. If Casey Kane had, did have a fantastic catch, and normally fans will see that one play and they'll really, really, really hang on to it, you know, for six months. But he made that one play. But he is having a good camp, you know. So I'm glad that they showed that film because you know it, it rewarded him for uh, for what he what you know the improvement that he's made and the production that he showed so far. Uh, maybe the most reliable hands at wide receiver right now. Overall, the wide receivers probably the most one of the most exciting things out side of the 20 personnel stuff and I wrote it last night is that they're just much better coached they're they're uh they're running better routes they're better finding space it's an entirely different unit probably the biggest overhaul year over year so far is wide receiver 
That's good to hear. And over on the defensive side of the ball, are we seeing more three down fronts to maximize the interior defensive line depth? I think on defense, and, and I got to be honest, I'm still trying to get a handle on it. Coaches are as well. So I'm getting bits and pieces of what I'm hearing, and we're trying to put it together. It seems to me they're playing way more situational football. And I think last year they showed so, uh, sort of a lack of awareness uh, when it came to situationally, you know, playing the corners way off on third and short, that sort of thing. Playing the safeties deep when they had to stop the run. I think they're showing a lot more awareness this year. You know, last year, I guess, they were just really focused on the basics. Um, we are seeing a lot more three down, sort of two outside linebackers that actually was probably their best defense going into the second half of last year. At least that's where they were able to uh, play the run better anyway. So yeah, that, that's a bigger focus for, for sure. Still run a lot of nickel. It just depends on the situation is I think they're, they're, they're flip-flopping back and forth quite a bit. I'm, I'm a lot more excited about what I've heard about the defense in the last week or two than I probably was, you know, a month, a month ago about the defense. And I know everybody's trying to think that's Gary Patterson, but none of this is really the type of things that Gary Patterson has been running. Yeah, if we need to generate unique pressures, then we got to go with three down. What's the lineup on the interior and who's making the most noise? I wouldn't say any one person is making a lot of noise. Everybody knows that Alfred Collins is the best uh, talent. I guess I've heard Tavondre Sweat's name a little bit more often, uh, and that's not surprising because he's probably has the second highest ceiling of the interior guys. You know, that position is all about what you can bring uh, play to play. Uh, motor goes a long way. Motor gets you paid for 10 years in the NFL and and ceiling will get you out after one contract. I, I, you know, Moro, Moro Ojimo became a fan favorite pretty much overnight with his interview yesterday. Um, he's he's the steady, reliable guy that gives you effort every play. You know, and then Coburn, I think we, we have a good idea what he is. They're going to rotate all, uh, all those guys a lot. I haven't heard about them using really all uh, three of them at once for the three down looks. Uh, a lot of times they're using one of those uh, jack outside linebackers. So I'll be curious to see if they if they change that up. To me, I would have uh, Ojimo out there at Jack. I would have moved him out there last year instead of Collins uh, just to, to get more heft against the run. Uh, but we'll see how it plays out. You know, I don't think they're anywhere close to tinkering. But, you know, I mean, we kind of have an idea of, of, of the pecking order there. Uh, Byron Murphy's been a little bit more quiet, but I think it's because we just kind of know how talented he is already. You kind of touched on the edge difficulties earlier but who's starting at those spots right now on edge well you got the jack and that's that's baron sorrell you know he's trying to they're trying to get him physically mature to play further inside you know i think they like what he does when he's lined up further outside he's a big kid he's a strong kid but he still needs to, to get a little more, bit more lower body strength uh, to, to be able to anchor um, they've actually got jet bush going back and forth over there a little bit and that's not what we want to hear that's where you want uh oshawn mathis in uh, as, as soon as possible and then ovi still has a good handle on uh, on on the buck over there, you know Justice Finkley is getting some snaps behind him. You know they're excited about him, but you know you've got the freshman mistakes that 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 come with the territory. That's that's why you enroll early, get him out of the way, so you're ready to hit the ground running in August. That to me showed some good awareness because they know that he's going to be able to at least physically uh, at the point of attack hold hold up better than Ovi. You know you still got to play the play the block correctly. Uh, that's a big part of it. But Justice at least has a physical stature to really take on those pulling guards that gave Texas trouble last year. So are we lacking across the board? there and stopping the run and the pass is there anything we're doing particularly well on the edge yeah i mean they just got to get better across the board i don't you, you can't go into next year with this this same group like this you're going to have trouble uh stopping the run again and, and it's going to lead to those linebackers being forced to make plays from sideline to sideline you know the, the 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 running back is designed to go a specific place and when that doesn't happen the linebackers in trouble uh and so yeah they, they need to get oshan they need to get better i think ovi has improved don't get me wrong it, there's still going to be some hesitation on my part to say it too loud until I, until I see it with my own eyes because, you know, I don't want to get hopes up. We have heard Jalen Ford mentioned often. So is he coming into his own during spring? Jalen Ford is having a good spring. You know, I think that everybody knows that that Mike is going to be his his spot this year. You know, David Benda could play there, but he's more of the the third guy that 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 fills in for uh, Overshone uh, most likely. And so I think yeah, Jalen Ford that that's his spot. And it's becoming he's be taking on more of a leadership role for sure. Uh, we had people uh, at the scrimmage telling us that he looked really good, but again, you know, the zero sum makes it hard. You know, I just told you that that Sark was really focused on running the ball. That becomes predictable. It's a lot easier easier to play linebacker when there's a lot less indecision. Uh, so I still want to see it with my own eyes, but we saw him make some really instinctive plays last year. I think he has the right traits for the modern game when it comes to athleticism uh, instincts. You know, he's he had, when he arrived on campus, he had one of the best 10-yard splits on the team. And that's crazy for somebody that's not even close to being known for his speed. So there's there's some real real, real ability there, and I think they're beginning to harness it. I think Choate, you know, we, we have the joke on the site, Choate the Goat, uh, because he took so much heat last year for both the linebacker play and recruiting. And now it sounds like he's starting to hit a stride with these linebackers getting better. They got Samaje Burrell, who I think is an absolute stud. It seems like things are kind of coming together for him. 
And DeMarvion Overshown put on weight, and he's finally getting a full spring at the position. So what are you hearing out of practice about DeMarvion? Yeah, DeMarvion had the uh, DeMarvion had a sensational scrimmage the other day, but again, you got to go back and, and zero sum it. The, 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 uh, the D-line was handling the O-line, and they weren't able to run the ball, so he was able to do what we know he can do, run around and clean things up. Uh, but he looks better physically. You know, I, I was very impressed with, with what I saw. Lower body looks a lot better. Uh, he just looks like a different guy, like a full-grown man. So I, I'm really excited to see what he does. They're, they're going to have trouble taking him off the field. It's him and Ovi fighting for Sam when they go into base. Uh, you know, the nickel comes off. And so him and Ovi are kind of battling for that. But there are also times that they leave them both on. And there's times when when uh, Overshone is playing that position that Benda comes on. Uh, Benda's having a good spring as well. It's good to hear linebackers improving. And then in the secondary, are we seeing added emphasis on man coverage? Another encouraging aspect of defense is that, you know, we feel strongly that the offensive, uh, that the wide receivers are better you know the the cornerbacks are not getting cooked you know they're they're playing a play pretty straight up there's a lot of give and take you know wide receiver wins a rep here db wins a rep there uh, that's how it used to be on on the texas campus when they were good we don't think that's zero sum because we know the wide receivers are, are talented and so and we know the dbs are pretty talented too the how how, how the secondary plays out i have no idea so i mean they're just moving guys around the, the safeties are all over the place they're deep they're not exactly experienced uh they're designed to cover a little bit more than probably playing the run force but it, they're gonna they're gonna have a good secondary this year at least much improved that's probably the second most improved group uh along with wide receiver i would say and that probably explains why they're having these these good camp battles so who are the starting corners at the moment and how does that change based on the scheme starting corners are uh deshaun jameson and, and jade baron you know baron's having a really good camp but so is jameson he's you know he had a pick six in the uh in the scrimmage off yours he, he picked yours again on thursday you know there's always <laughs> that's fun to see those two going back and forth because they both have boomer bust mentalities you know uh uh, Jameson's going to go for broke too and try to jump routes as well. If they if he cleans up the mistakes, he's going to be good. You know, there's always going to be that limitation where he might get mossed by a six three receiver. You live with that. We saw that happen to Quandre Diggs. Quandre Diggs is an All Pro. If he plays more technically sound, he'll be tough to beat out. But you got Ryan Watts waiting there. You got some young guys that are chomping at the bit. Obviously, when they go to nickel, then that's when Barron slides over and, and they bring Watts on. So they have some good depth there. They've got you know a good amount of experience as well. It's it's kind of an exciting group. And then like I said, you've got the younger guys, uh, Jalen Gilbert is one of the hardest workers on the team already. Terrence Brooks is basically the same. I had people raving about him, not just his athleticism, but how he goes about the game. Uh, Jameer Johnson is playing well. Jameer Johnson could play snaps for him this year. I expect to see all of them playing this year. You know, they, they played four corners last year quite a bit. I think we're going to see see those guys coming in waves too, especially if, if they can if they're able to put some teams away and get the young guys out there. Who backs up Jade Barron at nickel? Yeah, behind J- Jade, you've got uh, Jaron Thompson. I mean, Jaron is is proven to be old reliable as a guy that's smart enough to pick up a lot of multiple positions and play them capably. If you had a corner go down and Jade had to stay out there, uh, Jaron would come in. And so Jaron would would be a, a serviceable number two. I'm not saying that competition is entirely over. I just think we have a good idea of where it's going. And then safety is seeing a ton of movement. Who is starting at field and boundary safety currently? And what's the depth looking like there? Field safety might be the surprise of camp, and that's Keaton Crawford. You know, I asked somebody yesterday, I said, he, he has a, does he have a good chance to start? And then the guy emphatically said he's going to start. And so, you know, we, we were always excited about him as a recruit. We were excited about him last year as a corner. He got kind of passed up. Seems to be really finding himself at safety. It, uh, it's, op- it's unlocking a more vocal person. I think everybody's kind of surprised by that. He's re-energized. Uh, he's a freak athlete. You know, he ran 10 uh, as a junior, I believe he's big, full-grown guy back there. You know, in a in a secondary with a lot of cover guys, he looks the part of a guy that can be a, be an enforcer. And he's just picking things up fast, faster than anybody anticipated. I think. You know, on the other side, you've got Anthony Cook there. Cook has a good handle on it. Obviously, he's played a lot of football. But I think he's going to have competition as well because J.D. Coffey is playing well. Uh, Jaron Thompson is still out there. They've got a lot of viable options at safety. You know, I was thinking for sure they needed to go to the portal. Maybe they still do if somebody comes available. But, you know, I'm not feeling quite that that confident that they need to anymore. Cook's got a lot of competition on his hands. It's a, it's a little count, counterintuitive given how how much he played last year and, and played quite well at times. Is J.D. Coffey getting reps at boundary safety opposed to field safety? You know, in the mix to get the best best grouping back there, they're looking at Coffey at both positions. Uh, and Jaron Thompson could probably play both positions as well. So, you know, there's there's a lot of single high, and I think they want uh, Keaton Crawford's uh, uh, speed up there and his range. You know, he, he gets called rangy all the time. Uh, J.D. Coffey, if you want to just kind of entertain yourself, go watch his, his huddle highlights and see how hard he came downhill uh, in run support. He really punches above his weight smart player there's people that think that he's going to be tough to keep off the field there's kind of a theme brewing on the defensive side it sounds like we're hearing a lot about guys being developed properly across the board which is exciting the only problem uh, that we're hearing is where the, where the raw materials aren't necessarily there and i think the same probably goes for the offense so encouraging developments through spring so far 
And we saw an honest interview with Mora Ojimo where he talked about effort and buy-in lacking in previous seasons. So overall, what's the culture looking like for this team this year? Yeah, I, I think Moro Ojimo's statements, I think, echo throughout the team. And, and uh, you know, we say it every year, this, the year they have the most buy-in. It's, it's, it was tough to have buy-in last year. It's tough for any new coach to truly get buy-in because you got a guys that are just kind of incapable of buying into somebody else. His statements are indicative of, of the team. You know, he does have a, a lot of buy-in. It, it, took, uh, it took a couple new hires. It took exiling some guys out of the program to get it. Uh, but they, they certainly are on the, on the right path. And, you know, the team leaders will tell you where they're at. So I think we have some budding leadership across the board and the coaches have done well to harness it. I think I think Morrow said something like it's coach fed, player led. I think that's exactly what we're seeing right now. And we're going to see more of that uh, sneaking out, you know, the, with uh, social media. Um, you'll see posts like, you know, Worthy said some things that are very uh, constructive in the past about team leadership and, and and where they're coming together. And I can feel it, too. You know, I'm on the outside and I can feel it. So I think they do have have that sort of aspect, that cultural aspect uh, that they need to fix. That's that's been needed to be fixed for a long time, frankly. I think they have that headed in the right direction. But, but the, the problem is, what kind of adversity are they going to have? They might have had a good amount of leadership last year, but not enough to overcome that string of losses. I'm not not sure who was going to overcome that string of losses. So it's, it's nice to talk about leadership, but you don't really know what you have until, until there's some real adversity and you're not going to have adversity in the spring. So we are seeing development in a lot of spots, but what positions do we need to go into the portal for post spring ball? You know, if they look in the portal, it, it, it always depends on, on what, who becomes available. Uh, you know, I don't necessarily think they need a receiver. You know, there's some talk about the Alabama guy. You know, I'm just telling you how great the culture is and <laughs> you, know, you don't want to import that, you know, that's an export. So I, you know, they could still look at receiver if they wanted to. I don't really think they need to. You know, They don't have to do that if they don't want to. You know, I, I think they made some uh, sort of uh, campaign promises when they were recruiting to not really go after the portal and let the young guys play. And if that's the case, then it's going to be tough to go after an offensive lineman. And there might not be one be- that becomes available anyway. So you're always beholden about what becomes available. I would still like to add a linebacker. You know, they, they were going after Moody at Alabama. If things don't work out with him in the spring and he becomes available, I'd go all in there for sure. Uh, I'm not sure that they're going to find another guy that, that that's a surefire starter but you know they, they could use some depth there especially with that move of Hullaby who was Hullaby was actually playing linebacker quite well he had a couple picks um, so I think they could use some more depth there maybe maybe that's kind of the direction they go if they, wherever they're they're not confident on experience maybe that's what they're looking for I know everybody's looking for that frontline unicorn starter outside of O'Shawn Mathis that that guy doesn't exist at least not right now I don't think they have to go after a boundary safety anymore you know you'd still want it if you can find it but they don't have to force it Awesome stuff, brother. The fans have a solid view of how the team is progressing and also where we need to improve. Where can they stay updated on all the inside team information? You can find us at InsideTexas.com. You can find Homer there as well. You know, we're running a big promotion right now. It's it's uh, doing quite well. It's only a dollar for four months. We expect that prom- promotion to do well, especially this time of year. We hope to keep those people as well because we provide this sort of content throughout the year. Wall-to-wall coverage. I think we posted 70 articles last week. I feel like we have the pulse of the team better than anybody, and we're right there with the competition on recruiting. So come give us a shot. And that's a wrap on Eric Nolene. Go sign up at InsideTexas.com. Thanks for hanging out. Watch some more of my videos here. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and share if you want to support quality Texas content. As always, book on.